I thought what I'd do in five minutes is just tell you a few things about dinosaurs and just show you how our perceptions of these fantastic animals have changed over the last hundred years or so. Um, everybody loves dinosaurs, of course. They've been uh, popular in, in uh, all kinds of uh, illustrations for many years, but these animals have a huge size range from the size of a gigantic sauropod, a quadrupedal plant-eating dinosaur that would have weighed several tons, down to the size of a tiny little hummingbird, just a few grams in size. This is one of the largest size ranges for any lineage of vertebrate animals of all time. Birds sit within dinosaurs, dinosaurs sit within archosaurs, these groups are nested within reptiles. So these are all different kinds of groups of reptiles, first discovered and described in the 19th century on the coast of Southeast England by guys like the Reverend William Buckland that you see here. He described a few teeth and a few partial skeletons of these animals. Um, here is some of the material that was available to scientists in the 19th century. Not all that much, but as you can see, people thought that these reptiles were very reptile-like, very cold-blooded, very slow-moving, um, not very good at taking care of their young, things like that. Epitomized by some of these famous exhibits. Here are the Crystal Palace dinosaurs. Um, you can see down at the bottom Richard Owen with his bug eyes, this photograph taken later in life. This is the guy that founded the museum, the Natural History Museum in London. But these are big crocodile-like depictions of dinosaurs. Unlike what we know now, some of these taxa we know are much, much more bird-like than had ever been thought. Here are some small chicken-sized dinosaurs, completely preserved skeletons. You can see the eye up at the top of the slide, the long tail over here. These animals had feathers, a famous fossil called Archaeopteryx with really, really well-preserved feathers. You can see them in the wings up here. Described also in the 19th century, but until quite recently, people didn't know that these bird-like animals were related to the lizard-like, slow-moving animals that have been described much earlier. Now, of course, we know about more than 10,000 species of living dinosaurs. All of the diversity of birds that we see today are the direct ancestors of things like Tyrannosaurus rex, Diplodocus, Brontosaurus. Artists in the 1980s and the 1970s had initially speculated about the bird-like nature of dinosaurs. Maybe some of these small taxa, small animals had feathers. You can see some examples of some of the art that was done. Recently though, fossils were found that actually show that many of these reptiles had feathers, had feather-like structures. You can see some renderings down here. You can see some close-ups of what the feather-like structures actually look like around the skeletons of these animals. Here's some good ones. Small velociraptor-like dinosaur over here, covered in feathers. And I think that most people would agree that these, anatomically, these structures closely resemble the feathers that you see in living groups of birds. So these animals are extremely bird-like. You can see this might tell us things about the origin of the wing in birds, the origin of flapping flight, the origin of feathers. Some artists' renderings of these small velociraptor-like animals running along the ground, covered in fluff, covered in feathers. Here's Tyrannosaurus rex at a museum in Germany, completely covered in feathers, covered in fluff. Maybe they were different colors. Recent work this year has shown that some of these dinosaurs were orange in color, with banding on their legs, banding on their tails. Maybe Tyrannosaurus looked something like this. It's not really a maybe, actually. We kind of know from fossil evidence now that this is the current interpretation of what these very famous reptiles looked like, much more like birds than many of the groups that you may be familiar with. Some really cool stuff that's happened in, the, in just the last few years in terms of the origin of flight. Small dinosaurs with feathered wings, but also with feathers on their legs. We know now that probably flight in dinosaurs, flight in birds, originated from a phase where these animals were flapping both their forelimbs and their hind limbs. So this is totally weird, totally cool, something that's happened in just the last few years in terms of paleontological discoveries. Dinosaurs laid eggs. You can see some nests down here. Dinosaurs fought with other dinosaurs. Here's a fossil that preserves some fighting amongst different taxa. They were covered in feathers. We know that they were well preserved and they had air sac breathing systems just like living birds. We even know how dinosaurs slept. Here's a small little fossil of a small theropod dinosaur that was preserved in a sand dune asleep. So with its head tucked up under its arm with its tail wrapped around its back. Lastly, some famous little guys called Scanosauropterids. Say this um, after a few beers if you can, but these are little tree climbing feathered dinosaurs close to Velociraptor. 
that are close to the origin of birds, and that is now what we know about this field. Thank you.